Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of the Kiwi Way. If you've watched a few of our videos, you will probably notice that we sort of live on a little bit of a rural area. Um, we actually have two acres and uh, they class this as a, a lifestyle lock. For water supply, we collect our water off the roof. And then it goes down into the tank down there. So that's our water supply. Now we've never been sick from our water. Um, I have had the tank cleaned out a couple of times but as you can see you know you do there is bird poop and stuff on the roof and um, our gutters aren't as clean as what you'd like them and I do get up onto the roof and uh, pressure wash the gutters out once a year and I'm able to do that because I've got these diverters on here so you just disconnect the, the water wash them out and then put them back afterwards so uh, it's a relatively easy process to do that. Saying all that, we have decided to install a house filtration system. These are pretty standard now with new build. And so this one has a 20 micron filter, a 1 micron filter, and then a UV blasting light for cleaning and sterilizing the water. So that's what we're going to be installing today. <laughs> I'm not sure how good this is going to pick it up on camera, but um, there is a little bit of dirt on the bottom and some leaves and stuff. It is actually time I got this cleaned out. But as you probably hopefully can see, is the water is actually crystal clear. Any particles and dust and stuff actually just settle on the bottom. And the, uh, the intake is actually, you know, about for 30 centimetres above the bottom, so it doesn't suck any of this up. So you may be asking why, if we've never been sick from our water, why would we be putting in a filtration system? Well, simple answer is, uh, unfortunately, our hot water cylinder had to get replaced about a year ago. And uh, when we emptied the old one, the bottom part of the cylinder was just full of dirt, particles of dirt. And obviously that's been picked up from the roof. Um, and so I just thought it would be nice to, to filter the water a little bit and of course then it also comes with a UV system as well which I think is quite good while we're doing the job. So this is our existing setup. We have an intake here going to the pump which has got a pressure sensor on it and it pretty much then just goes straight out to the house. Right there we do have this extra connection here so we do have a what they call a trickle supply from the council and so um, we can actually fill the tank up it's uh, only trickle supply so it's, two, it's limited to two liters per minute which is quite slow and um, it's relatively cheap it's only about three dollars a cubic meter of water um, so that's a thousand liters uh, for three bucks which i think is quite reasonable and we generally do use that um, in the summertime to help top our pool up because that's where a lot of our water goes. So without the pool we wouldn't actually need the uh, trickle supply. The tank is certainly big enough and we get enough rain that uh, the storage of the tank is more than enough for us. So uh, anyway, so the f first thing we need to do is make uh, the shed a little bit bigger. This is, um, this is not big enough. Um, so actually the filtration system is quite a bit bigger and so the first thing I did is uh, just extend the pad here so I did that last night uh, unfortunately the cats have got into the air and put their paw print in so that will be there forever um, so now we're going to build a little shed over this um, it's going to be a, quite a bit higher than the previous shed and, uh, and that will uh, then also I'll put a back wall which will hold the filtration system on so that's the first thing to do so I purchased some of the shadow clad, so we'll be using this to, uh, to clad the outside of the new shed and uh, for, we'll be framing it up with um, some 75 by 50 and some 100 by 50. Um, actually the first thing we'll do is pull the uh, boxing off the concrete. These are actually great. Me and Reese made these up. There's a bit of, bit of reinforcing 
and just welded a, uh, a tab on the top and they're actually great for doing boxing put a screw in bang them in as you want excellent good little idea <laughs> So there we go, I've got the uh, frame sorted out here. So the next thing is to lift it on and uh, see how it fits. And then probably put the sides on and probably put a cross brace across the top and then some roofing on it. So it's been a couple of days since we've been on this project but I've uh, got the three sides done up and uh, we're ready, ready now to do the doors. Um, I really want to get the doors on so if we get a frost or something we don't uh, freeze any of the pump stuff up. Um, bit of delay yesterday. Um, this product is called uh, core clad but um, some other products are called shadow clad. Um, it's quite a nice product to put on the outside of things um, and I had originally intended to put ply for the doors but my wife thought this looked quite nice so I had to go get another sheet yesterday so I've got another sheet of that to be able to do up the doors so that's uh, one of the reasons for the delay and uh, yep so this is looking pretty good pretty sturdy and pretty good I haven't bolted it down to the concrete this concrete's still too wet but we'll um, we'll probably do that in probably about a month's time when the concrete's hardened properly but it is secured to the post um, that the power socket's on at the moment so it's not going to go anywhere and we've got a few screws into the and that side into the uh, wooden pile bits that we've got on the ground there so that's all good as well so anyway let's get into making these doors Right, so we've got the uh, door frames all on and this all lines up. Now what I do know is that this side of the shed still needs to be pulled down and pulled out a bit and I'm going to do that obviously when I bolt it to the concrete. The, I'm not sure I want to cut the fronts for these just at the moment because once you pull this down it moves everything around a little bit and um, much better square to that. So I've still got the braces on here at the moment but I want to do wanna, what I really want to do is close this up so that, um, you know, no water gets in there so we might just tack some stuff on that we have floating around at the moment and then we'll just get on to doing some of the stuff on the side and we'll come back to putting the proper stuff on the doors um, once we've got this bolted down and everything squared up a bit better well it's a new day and uh, next job on the list is actually to replace the power point in the uh, shed so this is a single power point and um, I've got here a double one and so we need to uh, take that off and put the new one in so that one for the pump and one for the UV light but while we're doing that um, I want to actually run power out to my shed one of the jobs I've always been thinking of doing is actually moving the robot lawnmower over over there and then putting the antenna up and so it's further away from the uh, house so while we're doing all this job we might as well dig this in so i've got a bit of digging to do it needs to be 600 mil deep we need to then also put a tape across the top yeah so let's get stuck into this right so we've got the uh trench dug all to the right depth so uh, now it's time to put the conduit in the ground with the uh, cable in it so we got the conduit in the trench and uh, inside the conduit we do have the cable there's the other end let's come up into here into the shed 
So the next thing we have to do is backfill and then um, put this in. So we've got that all buttoned up. So the next stage is actually to get the filter in. Now I do have a plan. So uh, I have all my parts listed out here and everything what I need and I believe I've got everything so it's a good place to start but the first thing we need to do is screw the filter up and so I can work out some measurements. main thing I ought to have to do is cut lengths of pipe to make all this work. And there we have the uh, system set up and complete in that respect. Um, so the inlet comes in from the tank in here, goes down through the pump. You know, this is the pressure sensor, so that turns the pump on and off when the pressure on this side is lower. That goes along down to this little pressure reservoir. So this has got um, a bellows in it, and so as it pressure. As the pressure prints up, the bellows squeezes up, so basically you can turn a tap on, a little bit of water can come out without the pump coming on. And then we go across and up, and so this here is um, my tap off goes off to the farm, off to the troughs for the animals, so that's not going through the filter. This will also go to the pool, so um, we'll use this, so I don't want to use the filters, filter all the water to go to the pool either. That goes up into the system and so then we have um, the first filter which is a 20 micron filter and then a 1 micron filter and then we've got the UV lamp in here so once it goes in into the UV lamp and then down here we've got a tap to isolate all that off and then down and goes that way into goes to the house so this here is our actual trickle supply so um, um, but also what we can do in a power outage is I can turn this tap off and turn this one on and we actually have trickle supply into the house which means we have enough water to you know fill the toilets up and have a drink and so forth um, when there's no power. So yeah, so that's the system there. Well, good morning everyone. Right, when I finish this project off this morning so there's only a few things we need to do. Obviously clearly we need to put the front on some nice more shadow clad uh, or cool clad I think I've got um, on the doors put some um, locks on the doors and then but before all that I actually want to bolt it down we don't want this thing flying away that would be a bit silly and so um, drill some uh, holes into the uh, into the concrete the concrete's had a couple of weeks now to dry so I think that'll be fine I was a bit worried when we first did it so as you know I quite like these devices items um, so we're going to use those to uh, go into the concrete right so I got those three bolts in I pulled down quite hard that's good nice and solid let's measure up and get these doors done There we go, we've got all that done. Got the locks. Keep everything out, that looks beautiful.
So the final couple of things to do is um, we need to fill the gap in down here and we need to put some core clad down here just to tidy it all up. Well there we go, all finished. So most of this project we really was building the shed. They say you can install these um, units outside um, but you do need a frost protection so um, we do get frosts here and so um, building a little shed around it I think was a much better idea and that took the longest. It only took about two hours to actually, um, when I had all the parts, correct parts to actually put all the plumbing together. Um, so not that, that much at all. Anyway, so that's a good little job done. And don't need to worry so much about the water. Not like there was ever a, a issue with our water. Anyway, thanks for watching everyone. And I'll catch you next time.